to Senator Lindsey Graham taking a more direct approach with his words, saying the goal of the war in Ukraine should be to take out Putin, adding there is no off-ramp with the Russian president remaining in power. When the invasion initially began back in February, Graham had floated assassinating Putin while on Fox News. And this is that when I talk about like the unseriousness of the Republican Party, I'm talking about this. If you're going to like pursue, like that's not a policy you discuss on television. <laughs> like if, if, if assassinating yeah. Putin is what they're going to, like you would, they would just do that and then deny all responsibility, not talk about how we should do it on freaking television. So obviously that, you know, obviously that's not something they're, they're doing or planning or, 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 or should in, out in the open. And we're not going to, we're not, we are not going to accomplish regime change in Russia. I think there's a possibility if this goes on long enough that you know, his own people might replace him with someone else. But that's not going to be, that's not something that we are going to accomplish today, tomorrow, next month, or next year. <laughs> Well, I don't think uh, assassinating Putin is actually part of the plan. I think Lindsey Graham is just, you know, trying to sound like a strong man. But I do think he's right that the goal of the war is to take out Putin in a way, like, you know, take out the regime to change the government of Russia. I think every action the U.S. has made at this point has been not to save Ukraine, not to help the Ukrainian people, but to actually harm Russia, to go after Russia, sanctioning Russia. Uh, you're trying to basically turn the people against Putin so that he is somehow ousted from office, trying to um, bleed out Ukraine, literally, so that the people in Russia losing soldiers say, hey, we don't want this special operation, quote unquote, that the, the government is calling. The people in Russia call it a war, but the government calls it a special operation. Uh, so I do think that the goal, I think he's saying the, the quiet part out loud, saying that the goal of this is not to save Ukraine and to help Ukraine re regain their, uh, retain their sovereignty or their freedom, but the real goal is to actually harm Russia, to take out Putin, the Putin government. And I think the American people should be livid about this and feel lied to. This is why we're sending over billions of dollars worth of of equipment and aid and we're you know we're here suffering in the United States with a collapsing economy that if people not being able to afford their groceries or pay their electric bills and or gas gas prices through the roof and yet right. we're supplying endless weapons to Ukraine for what end for a, an end that doesn't exist it's not going to happen the russian people love putin whether we like it or not they do he's overwhelming he's way more popular over the, over there than any of our politicians are here in the United States with us americans so it's not going to happen it's a pipe dream, but yet we're funding right. it, and we're going to continue this on endlessly right. because well, of this I mean, agenda. He's Authoritarian governments can maintain a veneer of popularity, right? Because the, there are there is criticism is a much greater amounts of criticism are allowed in this country of our government. So there's no, there's nothing. You know, we're very. Uh, we're battling and fighting and arguing and debating policy all the time. Robustly, you know, it's okay to call the president a moron and a liar and all those things. So there's there's a, a, there's a lot more acrimony in our political debates because we have we have a freer society than China or Russia, et cetera. So it's not. Well, I, I mean, I, 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 they can criticize in Russia and in China. They're totally free to do that. There are just limits. They're for sure not as free as we are here. For sure, they do not have as many freedoms when it comes to being able to criticize the government to a certain level, but they absolutely can do it. Uh, you know, in China, really, the limit is you can't do personal attacks. They don't like personal attacks on the politicians. They say you can criticize the policies. You can't just go after the person. I mean, they you have, can't search you know, online right, for criticism of the government. Well, in China, right, but everybody uses a VPN over there. So it's, you know, it's like a fake facade of this great firewall of China. Uh, I, I mean, look, people, they're definitely not as free, but they're definitely not living in some controlled society that what we think of when we look at like North Korea, for example, it's much more free than that. And they're freely traveling around. I mean, right now, Russians are not freely traveling around the world, but that's because of the West stopping them from doing it. But Russians and Chinese can go everywhere, and they, especially Chinese right now, and they do go everywhere, and they're free when they go anywhere they go to criticize and say whatever they want, or they move, they move to different countries, they immigrate. You know, it's not that locked down of an authoritarian country. It is more than ours, but not like over so crazy overwhelming. I mean, they I have, just can't I have a things. very low tolerance for any kind. I mean, I, I don't, I, I wish we were <laughs> much more. I'm not. We are freer well, sure, than that. Yeah. We're not nearly as free enough. Uh, but they, right, they and that's look, totally true. Yeah, that's absolutely right.